Hey everyone, welcome to Echo Calypse. So today we're going to be tackling team building basics. This is all you need to know where to start, how to do it. This is basically in sequence. So once you have, you know, you have started the game, most probably you'll be starting off with one SSR. Two probably if you were very lucky. So let's go to your deployment Okay, so once you consider one to three of your SSRs from the start, but uh, take note that you might be able to deploy more than three in the future. Okay, so consider your SSRs because number one, they are your core. Um, normally, your SSRs would be composed mainly of DPS to start because most often, um, most often, you will have SSRs, SS, DPS SSRs that are very good. Okay, so all of us got Fenrir, of course. So it's actually caused for you to start uh, your SSRs with a DPS. So I built my team starting with Fenrir, Yulia as a tank, then Kiki as another DPS. So consider your SSRs first. The remaining will be SRs. I won't recommend any R's at this point, but the remaining slots in your lineup will be more or less SSR. Uh, sorry, SRs. Considering that you have to think about the link for each of your cases. Okay, this is the link. The link gives you a lot of buffs for a specific case. So if you activate links, as you can see here, these ones, these cases here, activate the links for the case that you are using. So this case might be used in your team or might be used in your assist roster. Okay, so to activate them, you have to put them on the team itself, the six-man team here, or you put them in the assist here. Okay, so consider the link. The link is very important. It's not really the, the the nature of the game is not really to to let you bring a lot of SSRs and just plow through everything. So the key here is to establish the best link possible for the best team. So again, um, it would be a rare case that all of your cases would be SSRs, but again consider the link system i'll go through my end so again going through snezana so uh feriru i'm using these two are in my assist uh nanook is in my assist for yulia so snezana i'm is in is in the team of course i don't have audrey and i can at this point so they're not giving me link bonuses for uh this is for iori for iori i have senko on my team i have pavarati in assist and i don't have tower yet yet so that is basically what i have in a nutshell and again uh kiki here only has one link because i have finriro in the team so it's good that you're bringing both of them because they also participate in the same link Okay, and for Senko, uh, my fourth DPS, so Iori, Snezhana, Arvati, and La Yanling are in my assist. So again, take, um, consider your links, consider putting them in your team or putting them in your assist bar here. Okay, so next would be your leader buff. This one will come into play later once you have more or less a lot of SSRs. But for now, I was able to trigger two. These are SSRs of the same faction in your squad. So they trigger additional type of buff. So as you can see, I have a plus 90 attack on all units. So as you unlock, as you deploy more SSRs, which uh, is rare you can deploy a lot but your link will also suffer so technically your link and your leader buff should be a balance of who to deploy in your team okay so that is it so as far as composition is concerned 
my ideal scenario would be um, at least one tank. So I have Eula here as my tank. I have one healer here, which is Aori. And I have four DPS. You may swap out one DPS. Like, for example, if I want to swap out Senko, I can change her to probably another support. Uh, whatever you need, because that is what I'm planning. This team is enough for three DPS. I don't need a fourth DPS, but Senko here has has a lot of links. So once I get more SSRs coming in, I'd probably swap her out and place her in the assist column here. Okay, so that is my ideal team composition. This is very flexible, but the one healer and one tank that's non-negotiable. The rest you could actually tweak it to suit what the what the what the content is and who you're playing up against. Okay, so switching this off. So these are this is your assist, right? Switching now this is your artifact. So most of you are already um what do you call this? Are familiar with artifacts. They trigger depending on the sequence on auto. So if you put here the crown of Baal, then this will trigger first. Then the last one is Anklyph, which gives heal. This will trigger last, especially if you're in auto. If you're in manual, you can actually trigger any any of the artifacts here. So if you want to go through auto, uh, I would suggest you go first with the artifacts which give you buffs. So as you can see here, Crown of Baal is first because I want to give my team buffs and the rest is history. The next one is Le Levat Vatain. I'm not sure if I read that right, but it has burn. So I'd like to put that also up front. The next one, this has 60% chance on the target with the highest HP percentage lasting for one round. And uh, also try to put, put in a uh, healing glyph, a uh, healing artifact, because if you have a tank, usually your tank, for example, for Yulia's case, she has taunt, then usually her HP goes down quick. This one is going to save her. So that is why I have a healing artifact here. And the final one, just to tell you more about, guys, is the battle sequence. Team placement. Um, because debuffs and buffs and healing would come into play. The reason why I put this here, Kiki, nothing special. She's there for DPS, first initial DPS. Yula is here because I want her to take more damage in front. Kiki and Fenriru as well. So Yulia, you, Yulia is your tank, your taunt. So she has to be up front and she has to dish out the, the 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 taunt as early as possible Fenrir is here for another dps so your first line is technically for dps because this battle sequence will uh be one two three so first line going from up to down one two three then the next action would be the back line would be four five six so from top to bottom as well so i put iori here because iori has defensive skills so let's check out Iori. So for Iori here, this is what, what I mean. So raises her shield and heals all allies. If you need a quick heal, she's your fourth one to act. And there's a 50% chance to increase armor and resistance by 20 for two allies with the lowest HP for two rounds. So that is why she's there. Um, another, another, uh, what do you call this? Another... Um, option that you, you might want to swap in if if we're you know we're talking about lineup is Rinkin. He she is also a healer, but if you can check her out, her skill here. This is giving a buff, attack buff to all allies. So the reason why I also can put Rink in there because I, I would want to make sure that the last two DPSers ha have buffs before they act. Okay, so that is an option. Make sure that you read what they are giving your team because the action of this, this is a, a, a continuous action from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in terms of the sequence that they'll be doing. I'm just going to go back to... 
to Iori for this one. So there you go. So don't be afraid, guys, to swap out. Let's say, for example, um, you go back here. So you have Iori. If you want to swap out with somebody or someone or some of your <laughs> cases, where is she? Let's say, just an example, Garula. So swap upgrades of Iori and Garula. You can replace, just put, just replace. Because they will carry over the upgrades to the one that you're bringing in. So that's one good thing about this game, which I really appreciate. Again, going back to the battle sequence, placement is key. Buffs, debuffs, healing. Uh, who goes first is... I think the most customable, customizable feature that we have in battle. So again, be be wary of what effects you want to come first: debuffs, buffs, healing, and other you know other support spells that you might to come up first. Um, preferably, they, they are here in the fourth place, which is upper back row. Do not put them in front because usually your healers, your support people are are squishy and usually the front line gets attacked first. So again, that is it, guys. That is the battle sequence team placement. Next, after this video, I'll be creating a gearing guide for all of you. So, so far, that's it. That is your basic team building guide on how to go through your roster go through your assist take note here that i have two slots of assist to be filled out i just need more more ssrs to come in so that i could activate some of the links here the links are important and also what is important is you activate your assist so the last one is activated at level 50. Okay, guys, so that is it. So hopefully this team building basic helped you and would able to give you an idea on how to swap out in and out your lineups and tweak your lineup. So thank you very much, guys. Take care. Stay safe. This is the Warden, and I'm out of here.